Good morning. Welcome back to the Grimsman. I'll be your host, Jonathan, and today we're going to try something new. I have the Nivea Men Body Shaving Shave Stick. It's been uh, talked about quite a lot on the Facebook groups that I'm in, like the Double Edge Shave Den. There's the people that tout how amazing it is. It's discontinued, I guess, so it's kind of hard to get now. And you can still pick it up on eBay or Amazon for, I think, relatively inexpensive if you buy a pack of like four or five or six. Um, I got this one at TJ Maxx locally, uh, four bucks, pretty good deal. Um, I think some people got them for cheaper, uh, and I'll be using Barbershop de los Muertos 2 for the aftershave splash and a Henson aluminum head uh, medium with a Dorco Titan. And this is a stainless steel Razor Rock uh, DLC halo handle. This is a black coated handle. I think it just matches his head. I like the stainless steel handle, a little bit of extra heft on the Henson. I have the original. Um, I like the design. I just, I like the extra weight on the handle um, for the, the Henson. Just because the aluminum is so light. Wet the face, or we're going to rub this stick right on. The Henson is pretty cool. They have a, a mild one as well that I understand is really nice. Well, I've heard some people say they don't find much of a difference between the medium and mild. Um, I got the opportunity to try the medium in a pass around and I really liked it so I went out and bought one. And don't regret it at all. It's a great razor. I don't think I've had a bad shave from the Henson. And then they make an aggressive version. Uh, currently it's only in titanium. There's been a lot of back and forth I guess with them making it in in aluminum. They, some people call it, I think it was Shave 226, call it like a shave tax. Like they only offer the aggressive plate that wet shavers, experienced wet shavers would like in the very expensive material. Um, I'm not sure if that was intentional or not. Um, they say that they're not going to do it in aluminum just because they don't have uh, a lot of call for it. But then they did, some, some other wet shavers organized um, kind of a petition for it and a bunch of people signed up for it saying hey I would be interested in it if you made it to try to get them to go that way. Um, Prometheus Handcrafts with a uh, Jealousy from AP Shave Co. Not 28 millimeter. Sorry I just wanted to get that out of the way before I started lathering. So at first it seemed like that little petition didn't do anything. They put it in there's no answer. And then somebody else messaged them again to ask, and they said, no, we have no intention of doing an aggressive aluminum base plate at this time. And then a couple weeks ago, maybe it was a week ago, a week and a half ago, I got an email from Henson that had, or no, it wasn't, it was from the individual that organized the drive or the petition with a link, and they made a limited time offer for the people on that list that had expressed interest in an uh, aggressive aluminum to purchase it. It was a limited time offer. They were going to do a limited manufacturing run for the people that signed up on it. So I hit the list, or I hit the button and went to the Henson website and paid for it. Normal price. There wasn't any like upcharge or anything. It was still like the normal, I think it's $69.99 for a Henson aluminum razor. And then plus shipping from Canada, so a little bit more than that. Add a little water. Dip the tips of the brush. As you can tell, this is lathering really well. I've heard it has no issue lathering. I've used other Nivea products before. I have one of the Nivea Shave Creams from the EU. I think it's specifically from Crease. Their Nivea Shave Creams are really nice. They just never seem to take off here in the States. There's too many of the cartridge razors, just like the gels. They like something you can mix in your hand real easy. You know, most of the guys here don't use brushes, I think. All right, we're gonna shape with that. Anyway, so I think I was talking about the Henson uh, Aggressive. So I bought it. I paid for the just one-off, maybe one-off run of the Henson Aluminum Aggressive. 
Um, they had a note that it would take three to four weeks to ship. I'm assuming they were waiting until they got the list of everyone that actually purchased the Razor. And then they were going to make that limited run based solely off those numbers. So they had this briefly small window for people that signed up. And then hopefully when they opened that list, everyone that wanted one had funds available on a short notice to get it. Luckily I did and uh, was able to get there on that buy. So I'm excited to get that. I haven't got the email that it shipped yet. It's still within that three to four weeks they said. This really is an amazing razor for anyone that hasn't tried one and is thinking about getting a Henson, I do highly recommend. Um, I'll say it's $69.99 on their website. Uh, you can check out eBay, they show up fairly regularly or I've seen them on Facebook Marketplace before. They're out there in some of the buy sell trade pages. There's very minimal blade feel. You can hear it. It's very smooth. I haven't used a bad blade in it. I'm using a Torco Titan just because they've quickly become my favorite blade and every time I use something else I regret not using a Torco Titan. I'm not sure what it is about their coating they use or their stropping process, but the, the blades are amazingly smooth. And I gotta thank the other groomsmen for getting me to try them because I probably wouldn't have if not for them. I know Dorco has many other options. Some of them are more inexpensive uh, and they, I've heard varying. I mean, it's like any blade, right? Your mileage may vary. Some people like them, some people don't. I haven't used the other Dorcos. I think these are the higher range Dorcos, but they're not that expensive. I think it was 10 bucks for a hundred of them. Uh, they come in 10 packs of 10 instead of five packs like a lot of blades do. I think they're produced in Vietnam. Yep, made in Vietnam, but manufactured under license from Dorco company in Korea. So the company is in Korea, but they make the manufacturing is in Vietnam. side of my neck it's crazy huge hopefully when I put some of this splash that has witch hazel in it it'll tone that down a little bit wasn't there when I went to bed I just woke up with the big one hopefully I don't nick it and make it bleed everywhere well I don't have any complaints about a Nivea Shea stick so far It's plenty slick. The scent is nothing special. I mean, if you've used any Nivea product, you'll be familiar with how it smells. Kind of a sweet, not like anything that I could put my finger on, just a, a little bit of a sweet scent to it. It's not like sweet vanilla or sweet fruit or just a bit of a sweetness. Very inoffensive, it would match with any splash that you had. It's not like a scent that would stick around anyways. I have no doubt that once I rinse my face off, this will be completely gone. But all the base Nivea products all kind of have that same kind of scent. Just a light sweetness, inoffensive. It's not like the Arco Shea Stick. It's very controversial. I think it, the Arco Shea Stick just kind of smells like, uh, like a citronella candle. It's a, a lemony, but kind of an artificial lemon. Or maybe like a lemon cleaner, like a pledge or a... Some other kind of cleaner like that. I'm really liking this, this knot on this brush. Uh, I set this last week, if you guys got a chance to watch that video I posted last weekend. 
or uh, the how to set a shaving knot. I set this myself. Uh, the loft, I think, came out perfect. I used two quarters to bump up the loft a little bit. And I've lost a few tips since I've been using this in the last week. Maybe, well, not tips like hairs. I've lost maybe like 10. I mean, I was losing a couple a day, and I've used this like four or five times. I didn't lose any today. Obviously, I didn't bowl lather today, but I haven't seen any come off the brush on my face or anything. So I think maybe it was just breaking in a little bit. But the 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 gel, the extremely gel tips, uh, took a little getting used to. But it feels great on the face, especially for a face lather like this. It's, it feels very similar to um, I have a Amac silver tip knot. It feels very similar to that silver tip knot. And so far as like the tips are extremely soft. Like there's no scratch at all, but there's a nice amount of cushion and scrub, but there's no scratchiness at all, which I, I don't like scratchiness. So that's a plus for me. Dig the knot, happy with how that went. I still have to use it with the hard soap to see how, I don't think I have concerns necessarily, but uh, I'm, I am curious if the extremely treated soft gel tips will be able to pick up enough soap off of a hard soap to lather well like a Tabic or a mental wool fat or martin de Condre, you know like a triple milled hard soap i'm still not sure if uh, martin de Condre is triple milled or if it's just I think they're just dried for a really long time. Well, I mean, it's kind of the same process. It dries and all that moisture comes out. So soap is very hard, comparatively speaking. I remember reading about it when I first got it. They dry age their soaps for over a year, or maybe it's longer than that. I think triple milled soaps, there's a mechanical process that squeezes all the soaps out or squeezes all the excess water out of the soap. <clears throat> Excuse me. As you can hear my toddlers having a glorious morning. My two year old automatic response to anything at all is to scream at the top of her lungs and show everybody her tonsils. She can, she can scream, that girl. She's not even mad, she just does it to get attention. That's her new thing. Hopefully she gets out of that phase pretty quickly. But her and her sister have four, they fight like two and four year old siblings do, arguing over dollies or <laughs> pop tarts or whatever it happens to be. She touched me, we get that a lot. Yeah, a little weeper there. Don't normally, I don't think I've ever like cut, cut myself at the Henson. I don't think any razor is capable of getting a weeper. But I think I already stopped. It's pretty hard to cut yourself with this. Like the shave angle on these. If you haven't checked out their website and they talk about the machining work that goes into this and the research, it's pretty impressive to get that angle and that bend on the blade to be so precise. It's, it's quite. I think it's a, I think it did an excellent job making that razor. Um, the, the machining and the research that went into it, I do think it's drastically different from all the other razors. Obviously it's still using a double-edged blade and it looks very similar to all other double-edged razors, but the shave that you get from this versus the shave that you get from a DE89 or Mula R89, 
like a standard safety razor, it's it's drastically different. The the feel, the the blade angle, the zero chatter. I like some of their videos. I see some people make fun of them. I I think their advertising is actually really smart. Um, they had one where they showed a where they showed a cartridge razor, but then they showed it with like a DE eighty nine style safety razor. Um, I don't think I have one handy because I don't use a DE eighty nine often, but kind of like this, where there's that gap between or underneath the top cap, where the top cap and the base plate don't pinch right at the edge of the blade. So they sh showed them both at the same angle, shaving a piece of cardboard, and the blade on the the DE eighty nine style razor, the blade flexed significantly and would like gouge and skip and then gouge and take chunks out of the cardboard while the henson because it's so rigidly clamped at that very specific angle it just smoothly goes along and it makes these very fine shavings of cardboard on top with no skipping and no gouging it was really impressive i thought to demonstrate the the efficiency of their their design The, uh, the cartridge razor had the same effect as well uh, with the skipping on the cardboard, the blade flex, and then skipping forward after the flex. It would flex back and then skip forward and like gouge into the cardboard edge. It's kind of demonstrating how it's working on your skin too, like that, how that flex, that blade chatter really can affect the shave in a lot of razors, which is why I think some of my favorite razors have a clamping similar to this uh, insofar as it clamps the blade edge very very close to the edge of the razor like this one and uh, the lupo obviously they're, they're drastically different but they both have a very significant um, blade top cap and base plate clamping on the edge of the blade so that that blade is held very rigidly I think that's a very significant manufacturing plus there. And I kind of look for that in most of my razors that I try to buy now. I always have a ton because I collect vintage razors and then, you know, I feel like I'm the rabbit hole like everybody else and bought everything. I think I'm going to be slowing down my buying. I think I can tell significantly in my razors that I have, the ones that have that superior blade clamping. You might not feel that the chatter on your skin. Like some razors you can feel the chatter. It doesn't feel good. Um, some you can't really feel it as much, but in the shave, you have a lot of irritation. You're not sure why, that could be why. I think the only complaint I've heard about the Henson is that some people don't find it efficient enough for them. Uh, I don't have that issue. I mean, it's not the most efficient razor I own as far as closeness of the shave or long lasting BBS. I think the Rex Ambassador will always be that number one spot for me. That razor, for something about the geometry in that razor. The shape is just amazingly smooth, but I don't have any issues with the efficiency on this. I get a very, very close smooth BBS. It might not last as long as the Rex. It might be a touch less close. But I think it's nice. It's smooth. It's so smooth. For some reason it'll be smooth with the grain, maybe cross the grain, but then the against the grain pass. 
and there's a blade chatter that's gonna happen, it's gonna be on that pass. That against the green is where, like Sack always says, right? On your neck and against the green is where the, the proof really is in a razor. And I agree that against the green pass is definitely where you'll, if you're gonna have an issue with a razor, it's definitely gonna show up there if nowhere else. Yeah, I don't. I don't have any complaints with efficiency on this razor. It's it's a fantastic shave. Very smooth. Very close. I haven't tried the mild, so I can't speak to that one. But I imagine it's very similar. I know they did increase their prices. Like I was saying earlier, it's seventy or sixty nine ninety nine now. Uh, I think they used to be fifty. And they did a price increase. I don't know if that was due to inflation. I don't think so. I think it was done before all the gas prices with inflation kind of went up this last year and a half. Um, I think it was just they had an introductory price where they were trying to get their razor out there and heard. And now that they're more established, they're raising their prices to a more a model that's more sustainable. And there's a lot of intricacies involved in pricing and price adjustments that some people overlook. I know there's been a lot of talk recently about soap increases and aftershave increases and what makes a soap or a splash or a razor worth it. I think it's a funny conversation to be completely honest. And you'll see people holding $300 razors in their hands complaining about a $25 soap. You're like, really? Is, is it really that big of a deal? I mean, I think price increases are there because materials cost more. Companies have a profit margin to make. And there's plenty of companies to choose from. If you don't like the price of a company, if you don't feel that that particular soap is worth that price range, then don't buy it. Go to one of the hundred other artisan soap companies out there. I don't think I'd ever stand on a pedestal and say this soap will never be worth it at this price. It just depends on what you want. Like sebum gold, everyone usually brings that one out. It's the most expensive soap I've seen, I think. Very, very, very expensive. But that's that's his price. I mean, he's selling a product in 100% recyclable materials. It's a glass jar with a bamboo casing and a cork top. All, everything he uses is sustainable and recyclable. All the products he uses is 100% uh, organically sourced. There's no, like stearic acid in most soaps is processed. I don't know, there's a leaching process that's made to get that extra stearic acid out to use it in the products. He doesn't use any added stearic acid. He uses uh, products that have a high stearic acid content already to ensure that he has enough stearic acid in his soap. And you know, he charges appropriately for that. Maybe, obviously, it's he does small batches and his profit margins are going to be different because of that, but that's pretty short. If you don't like it, then you have to buy it. I don't have any sebum. I won a set once in a, a raffle, and then I sold it because I wanted to have a razor. <laughs> but I liked it. I don't know that I would buy it again. I don't know. A $500 razor I can use forever, theoretically. A $500 soap only get me so far. But that's more off my my pocketbook telling me it's worth it, not whether or not I think the soap itself is worth the price point that he established. Buy what you like. I'm gonna do a cold water rinse and I'll be right back for the post shave. All right, I'm back. Thanks for sticking with me. 
trying to get that post shave on here at Barbershop Dillis when we're at those two. I really like this. It's my default splash to use when I have something that doesn't really match the soap, which is not that big of a deal. And I like the scent on this. It's a very much a cologne scent. It's a dupe of Tom Ford for him. Definitely got some alcohol in it. But it's got some other stuff in there too. Aloe and witch hazel, I think. It's a nice splash. I have like extra splash in my hands. I rub it on my wrist and my neck, kind of like a cologne. Make that scent stick around a little longer. I mean, it's a it's an after shade. Usually they don't last forever. I'll probably still smell it a little bit at the end of the work day, but it, it's not like it'll be, it, but very much in like a personal space kind of a scent. It won't be projecting at all. The shave was great. I highly recommend the Henson if you've been on the fence about it. Um, I give it a, a 10 for 10 recommend. It's a, a great razor at a, a good value, I think. Um, that aluminum, even if you don't use a different handle like I did, the aluminum handle is great. Um, the design on it is very grippy. I have no issues holding it as well. Uh, I think it's a good value for what you're getting. And it's going to last forever. It's not like a zinc um, plated razor where it's going to... The zinc ones will get water underneath the zinc plating or under the chrome plating. When the chrome plating comes off and the zinc degrades, they don't last as long. They can last a while if you take really good care of them, but it all very significantly depends on how good of a job the plating was on that chrome plating. Uh, and the Nivea body shaving stick. It's it's a great product. I'll probably use it for a travel stick. I don't travel a whole lot, but when I do, if I have to go through the airport, this will go through the airport. Um, that works a treat. I didn't have to use any more. I got all three passes from that first pick up with the brush. It worked great. I get why everyone was talking about it. It's very inexpensive, very easy to use. I imagine the stick would last a really long time. I didn't use a whole lot. I mean, it's not like a huge stick. It's bigger than the Arco stick though. The Arco sticks, if you've ever seen them, they're pretty small. Pretty good size stick. That'll last you a good while. And usually to get them now, you have to buy them. I think you can still buy them like one at a time from like Amazon, but then the price increases significantly if you buy just one. Um, I think you could buy a two pack or a four pack or a six pack and the savings are a little bit more reasonable at that price point than you're going to have soap forever. Um, that's it. Thanks for joining me for the shave. Appreciate you sticking around. Um, leave some comments if you enjoyed the video or if you have any ideas about future content or something you'd like to see from the channel. And hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Have a good day.